Hi, I'm Tiffany Andrews, and I'm your host today. I wanted to help you understand what the Village Group is all about. So for the next 40 minutes, we're presenting the Village Group Talk Show. The guest today is Ray Funny, who is the founder and executive director of the Village Group. It's a pleasure to have you here today, Ray. Thank you for inviting me. So, Ray, whenever you meet people within the community and you want to share um, exactly what the Village Group does, the culture that it fosters, your mission statement, you know, what would be your elevator speech? Very good question. And I, I'm, I ask that question often. But essentially what we do, we, we try to provide the kind of environment where young people uh, are feeling comfortable being with others to learn, to grow, and to be able to um, feel that they are special and they are wanted. Um, our goal is to create the pathway for young people to find their way in life, what careers that they may be interested in, in pursuing so we can help them at an early age trying to get prepared for the inevitable. And ultimately we want our kids to be um, um, taxpayers and, and being able to have a good quality of life. So what age group does this, um, does the village group serve within the community? Well, we, we serve grade kindergarten through ninth graders. Oftentimes we have youngsters that come back after the ninth graders because they have enjoyed the experience and we bring them back in either as a, a scholar or maybe as a counselor. So it really is it's important for us to reach out and have a very warm and inviting atmosphere for young people, um, no, no matter what, whatever age it may be. Awesome. Now, you know, we're embarking on the summer months where they're transitioning out of school and um, now even with some of the courses um, no longer being hybrid within our schools. What are you looking forward to through, um, well, past COVID-19 with face-to-face -face emerging the youth within all the programs that you all offer? Well, this past year was really um, a very unique experience for all of us, and particularly young people. They have really went through a lot of um, soul searching and new experiences with you know, the virtual uh, learning experience, and which we did as well. But I think the kids now need to be able to find a way back to some normalcy. And our program this summer would, would bring our kids back together in a face-to-face -face environment and provide them the kind of experiences that we have enjoyed for many, many years ago. Um, we, we just want to be able to, to, to provide academic enrichment and also enrichment programs other than academics, uh, fun things learn how to um, engage kids with cameras and, and videograph and, and we want them to be able to do experiments in the field with the environmental studies and those kinds of things. Now it seems as if I recall once hearing that um, one other component that you all push on the educational standpoint is the STEM research program. Well we, we believe STEM science, technology, engineering, math is, is a very important part of learning as well as now is STEAM, which is science, technology, engineering, art, and mathematics. Uh, we try to uh, bring that whole entire learning experience to young people. And this summer, we, we have ventured and partnered with some scientists this year, uh, where we're going to have a, a, a program to have our youngsters, particularly our fifth and sixth graders, uh, involved in some serious environmental um, learning with some scientists this, this summer. Uh, we're working with them at the Hastings Plantation where we will have them to do field, in-field training. Uh, we plan to do um, some aquaponics, learn how to, to grow food and, and, and water and, and the, the, the unique things about that whole entire process. We also plan to have our young people involved in and some soil sampling. Also, uh, we want them to be involved with testing of water so they can understand these are really an opportunity to learn about STEM-related jobs and where they can find a, a, a space in, in our society. These are good-paying jobs, actually, uh, when you are involved with geotechnical engineering or some um, geotechnical firm that's doing testing and monitoring 
and we want our kids to be familiar with these kinds of things about our environment. Our environment is all we have, and we have to find a way to teach our young people how to be loving of our environment and what it has to offer you and us. And so that's what we're doing. We're doing it to expose them, but more importantly, to give them another perspective on life, on how they could, in fact, find a niche. That's awesome. So you all bring certain, it sounds to me as if not only do you enrich their lives through um, standard educational curriculum, but you also give them on, on hands training on, you know, just very practical skill sets on this is how you do this. And while you touch on so much as education driven, what about the culture component? What, what, what is it that you offer the kids in that regard? Well, we, 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 we have all kinds of partners in this community. Uh, we partner with um, people who are um, doll makers. We have people who does, uh, people who help us with um, just the art and um, people who also have experience with the development of our, of our heritage. We, we have enjoyed recently um, working with large property owners, people who have a vested interest in our community, who want us to learn about our culture, learn about where we came from and how it could be uh, a way of, of enriching our young people to learn about the future. So we, we're working uh, this year with uh, Ace Point Plantation to bring our kids there to have a learning experience and learn about uh, aquaponics and, and the other inside scientific um, endeavors. You know, um, what do you think if someone were to stop one of your um, parents? What do you think that parent, what would be the takeaway that that parent would share with someone on how you have enriched your families? What, what might be something that we would hear from a parent that's of a student? I think the key word that you just said was family. We, we think the family is the nucleus of our being. We think that having the family um, involved, the parent and the child and their significant others involved in that learning experience is so vital. So I, I believe families and, and other guardians, because oftentimes we have grandparents and other significant others that's really giving these young people the insight in life that they need to have, that they will say that this program has been meaningful and very helpful for not only the child, but the family, because we reach out and try to embrace the entire family because we think that's very successful when we do that, as opposed to just focus on the child. For a youth to attend um, the school room at mm -hmm. the academy, what does that cost for that parent? The, 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 the cost for a child to participate in our program is $240 for a six week program where we provide all kinds of goodies such as certified teachers, we provide transportation, we provide three meals, or we provide a lot of love. And it really, I think it's a bargain. In fact, I know it's a bargain. Well, I, I think you're very confident that, that your program that you have comprised totally brings value to the community, it brings value to the students, the parents, and of course, your entire team. So while you're taking all the steps that's needed to really help foster growth within um, the academy, let's share, um, I guess one of the things that we really want to drive home and I really want to make sure people get it is that what makes this, um, it's like you're planting a seed. So what does it take to help your seeds? Right. Well, you know, it takes, it takes a village actually to raise our, our kids and I think we all have a part to play. Some of us are, 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 are floor sweepers, some of us are cleaning windows. Some of us can afford to make an investment, a financial investment. And I look at an investment over time. And when you invest dollars, it's best to invest it with the intention of leaving it there, watching it go to high, the highs and the lows, because you're going to have that. And kids are just the same way. They're going to have, when you invest in a child, they're going to have low moments, but they're going to have high moments. Can you, can you stay the course and watch that child develop over time with your investment? So I, I want people to, to know that uh, the investment is, is certainly is in our future. It's in South, the state of South Carolina, in this country that we, as adults, we invest in our young people. 
that we put our monies and our, and our, and our time in our kids. And you know, at some point in time, we all had someone to really invest in our future, to give us a direct path, or if you do this avenue, or if you study this particular, um, you know, major in this in college, these are the job opportunities that are there for you. So, and obviously you've taken all of your hard work and education and brought it right back here to South Carolina, and we're so glad to have you in here in Georgetown. But now, what, what makes you Mr. Funny? Like, uh, what great things would you like to, um, I mean, here's a moment for you to like, just kind of toot your own horn. What makes you that guy? That guy who cares about the kids, that guy who cares about the community, that really wants to make a difference, make an impact, and to foster growth? You know, I, I came from a very humble beginning. I remember as a child, my dad had some fields. He didn't have a farm, he had fields. But I, I, I used my dad's mule and his plow to plant his fields, and I learned how to work, and I, I appreciate the value of work, and I know how important it is, how to be consistent with that. And so, so, my, so me, I'm about giving back. I've had a, an awesome career. I, I just really have. I mean, I just, I have no, 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 no qualms about my professional and personal and spiritual being at this time. Uh, I just want to give back. I just, I think my time is here now for that reason, for, is for me to give back to help others. Which is awesome, and I'm really glad that you also offer that component within, um, within your organization, whether people can make donations, financial donations, and also on your website, there's a listing there to give of your time as a volunteer. And you request volunteers in all, from all capacities. There's nothing that's too big or too small. Along, and that goes into uh, fruition of your donation levels too. So there's been rumors on the street that um, you're a, a person to know, that you've been um, awarded numerous um, awards. Uh, share with us what you just recently uh, received an award for. I, I think I recently received a, a, an award from the AMA, American Medical Association. Um, they recognize uh, local um, officials. I work full time with the local government and I also I am an unpaid executive with the Village Group. And I've um, been recognized for the work that we have done over the years. And I say we because it takes all of us to make this happen. I just happen to be the figure here today. And, and my job is to lead people, to encourage them to do great things, and they recognize the work that I'm doing um, in this very special way. And I'm very humbled today to, to have received that, that acknowledgement, and I hope that this award uh, will be able to help be leveraged to help further the work that we're doing. Well, while you have been obviously the driving force behind this, there is someone that cannot go unnoticed, and that is your wife, Queen. Um, now, Queen is an educator and is actively involved in the Village Group along with you too. So um, let's take a look at an interview that was done um, during one of her typical busy days at the office. And again, she's the director for Plannersville Summer Academy. If I can make an impact, if we as a team can make an impact, if it's even just one kid, that one kid could impact, what, five or ten more. So as uh, long as I can keep that vision, I'm good, because it keeps me engaged, it keeps me enthused, and I'll, I'm able to see benefits from it. You really, when I get ready to leave here, ask Nancy, I cry in a minute. When you hear some of these kids, you know, some of us are very fortunate not to deal with all the other drama um, in life. I'm talking serious dramas in life. Uh, and you're able to just love on them, to let them know that it's, it's a better situation going on here. It's a better life. I know you went through a lot, but still you have opportunities to turn all of this around. And that's my perspective on all of this. I have several that couldn't hang out with us because they couldn't get a grip of the vision. You have to have a vision and love it in order to really hang um, because a couple of things, we're not paying you enough to, 
just say, well, I'm just going to make some money. Um, so you have to have a love for, for, for this ministry in order to hang. And most of my people, 90% um, of my people, the staff returns. And there's some added on because you want new things, new ideas. But for the most part, they want to be here. They want to be here. And that makes a difference with the atmosphere. Welcome back, I'm Tiffany Andrews, your host of the Village Group Talk Show, where I'm interviewing a few people associated with this amazing nonprofit organization that has touched so many lives in Georgetown County. Our guest today is Jada Armstrong. Now Jada is a student, correct, with Plannersville Summer Academy? Yes, yes. ma'am. Okay, Jada, share with us some of your stories. How old are you? I'm 11. You're 11 years old, okay? And um, do you have, uh, going through this experience with Plannersville Academy, have you made lots of friends there at the school? Yes, ma'am. And what's your favorite subject? My favorite subject is math. Your favorite subject is math. Now, at the academy, what have you learned that has helped you in mathematics? We like, we learn different things. We learn, it helps me learn subtraction, multiplication, addition, and different things that I didn't know in math and I learned during the summer academy and like after school. So Jada, how many people in your family have gone through the academy? Um, four because I have my older brother, his name is Jay Sean, he's 19, and he was um, on the village group. He used to ride bikes with Miss, Mr. Ray and Miss Funny. And then I have my second older brother, his name is Eric. He is actually 14, and he used to be in the summer academy. Then I have my older sister, she is actually, she didn't actually do it, but she went to the summer camp. And then I have my younger brother, and he actually does the summer camp and after school. Now, which one is your favorite, the summer camp or after school? The summer camp. The summer camp, and why is that? Because I get to spend more time with my friends, and whenever Mr. Ray and Ms. Funny, they take us on field trips, and it's just a fun experience for me. Now, with, with field trips, let's talk about field trips, because you that's always like a learning moment, and you're, you're able to be around your friends and have fun at the same time. So what places have you gone to that have sparked an interest? I went to a bowling alley, I went to a water park, I went to the arcade, and many more places. And maybe more places. Well, if you had to tell one of your friends to attend the academy, what would be two of the reasons that you would tell them, hey, this is something you should do during the summer and after school? Because you just sitting at home, you won't learn anything, but if you come to the summer academy, you will learn more things. And if you just go home right after school on a regular weekly day basis, you won't, you, if you need help with your schoolwork, you, you will just sit there not knowing it, but if, you're, if you go to the after school program, the teachers there, they'll help you with it and they'll help you understand it. That's awesome. And now with the after school, school program, do a lot of the kids that you are um, in classes with at your school attend that as well? Okay, so you just have an outpour of community and that you're there also learning, that's awesome. It, now, everyone has these moments. And you're gonna be, you have to tell me the truth. Share with me the funniest moment you've ever had at the academy or during a field trip or the after school program. Um, <laughs> this one time I was in summer camp and I was in class and I was just goofing around and I fell out of my chair backwards and I fell on my side. And then, and then one time I was playing with the stapler and I stapled my hand on accident. 
Oh my gosh. Okay, so I'm going to have to put a sign around you that says caution, beware of danger, because things happen like that around you. That is so great. Jada, well, I would like to thank you so much for taking time out to chat with us today. And you know, there are many former students that have gone on to be mentors and others in the community as well. Now here's a look at one of them. Hey everyone, my name is Vanessa Dees. I am currently a teacher at Georgetown Middle School. I teach both eighth grade and seventh grade Algebra One honors and pre-algebra honors. I have been a part of the Village Group since the Village Group started. I also attended Plannersville Summer Academy and I grew up in the actual academy. I was a counselor, I am now working there and I'm also a teacher there. Um, the Plannersville Summer Academy has been nothing but a blessing to me. It has helped me to grow as an individual and to be honest, I am continuing to grow their program. Every day it has changed my life from being able to travel to be able to see other kids who are enjoying life through the Village Group. The Village Group has made my mindset change. It has changed me from having that fixed mindset to a growth mindset and realizing how important life is and education is. Um, the Village Group has allowed me to you know, interact with people that I never thought I'd interact with. I've had the opportunity to grow relationships beyond relationships, and it has been truly one of the greatest things in my life. So thank you guys for always being a part of my life and choosing me because sometimes students don't get the opportunity and seeing these kids get that opportunity to go out, out of the state, out of South Carolina, and being out of just literal Plannersville has helped many of us grow. So thank you all and hope you guys have a great day. My next guest is Marsh Dean, a previous intern at the Village Group and owner of MLNL Media in Pauly's Island, South Carolina. It's a pleasure to have you here, Marsh. Thanks for having me, I appreciate it. Awesome. You know, I've heard some really cool things about you um, and all that you do for the organization, but one of the things I want to know before you decided to intern with the Village Group, did you already know who they were? I really didn't. Um, I'm a, a native of Georgetown County. I'm familiar with the area, but I, I didn't really know much about the Village Group. Um, I had heard of it, and uh, Palmetto, Palmetto Giving Day is a fundraising event that's large around here, so I'd had, I had heard of the Village Group, but I really didn't know anything beyond uh, of the name, the Village Group. Okay, okay, well something made you say, okay, that's a nonprofit I'm going to give my time towards. and. Um, in making that decision, because we all know that giving is really important and that's what that particular day is for raising funds, but what, what was it that struck you as this is a nonprofit I want to work for, giving of your time and of your talent? Um, that, what separated it from the others in the area? Well, I was um, I actually applied for an internship called Georgetown Rise, which is a United Nations uh, regional center of expertise here in Georgetown County and I was placed with the village group because I actually grew up on the Black River about two miles from here um, and so I have a connection to the area but through moving to Pauley's and then going off to college I kind of lost touch with this region um, but when I realized I had gotten the internship I was very excited I didn't quite know what was in store for me um, but it ended up being a, a blessing and really connected me back to, to Georgetown County, but also to this community here in Plannersville. So um, it sounds like you, during that moment of interning, there was also an epiphany where you're like, I'm giving back, I'm giving back locally, and obviously you met some pretty amazing people. So what was one of the best takeaways from your experience? I would say a, a huge takeaway for me was um, inspiration, but also I, I got to see leadership on a local level. Um, throughout my college experience, I kind of tried a few different things and I honestly was looking forward to moving elsewhere. Um, I had some friends that moved out west and they were living in some new, new places and I was hearing all the stories, I was very excited. and That's kind of where my head was at. But um, through this internship, I was kind of reconnected with, with the value of this area with um, all the people, the communities that we have. And I saw leadership on a local level. I saw people from the area that were invested in this region and invested in the people here. Um, 
And it, over the course of that, that internship, it kind of just flicked a switch in my head and I realized that, you know, I actually could find a career doing what I enjoy in my hometown, a place where I have connections and where I'm connected to these people in these communities. And for me, it just changed my thinking and I decided I, I didn't want to leave. I wanted to stick around and, and see what kind of future I had here. And two years later, it's here I am and it's, it's been great. That is awesome news because oftentimes we find that so many of the youth after they graduate from college, they leave the area, and you are able to find something to keep you grounded here and still use all their talents and education that you learned throughout your um, in college to make a very good living for yourself. Um, what would be one of the most shareable moments, um, either from your perspective as a volunteer or something that you saw happen that was very impactful to one of the youth? Well, I'll say um, recently we, we had an event out here at the Plantersville Cultural Center and it was a, a painting day. Um, and so the village group organized uh, a group of students to come out here on a beautiful sunny day and there was about 40 easels set up. Um, they had an art teacher out here and they did an outdoor painting expo for one afternoon. And one thing I noticed is that there was a student, a young man who um, two years ago, as I was the intern, he was a younger fellow in the village group. Well, I noticed at this event that he was going around and helping some of the other students with their painting. And this is something that, that I just have noticed with the village group, and, and that's a great example to me of, of leadership. Um, these young people see great leadership in their mentors, teachers, and role models. And throughout the years, you know, seeing that leadership kind of trickle down to these students and to see that young man helping out his fellow students with, with you know, something as simple as painting, but, but it just struck me that um, that's an example of, of leadership and how it trickles down. And it also even like helped develop really a sense of community that even though he wasn't struggling with his particular project, he's like, let me go and help some other people. That's a great shareable moment. And it, it shows how volunteerism can really affect your life and push you to a positive direction. And on top of that, we were able to keep local talent local. How did volunteering with the village group change your life? Well, so my degree was actually exercise sports science, something that, that I enjoyed, but I wasn't necessarily passionate about it as far as a career went. Um, but as I was working with the village group, my role kind of turned into a marketing role. And, and really at the time, I knew nothing about marketing. I had never sent out a newsletter. I had never really done any of that. And um, I saw a need for it though. And, and I've always been a, I've always loved photography. Uh, throughout high school, I was in film club. And so I, I saw an opportunity to, to take something that I enjoy, to take something that I was passionate about, and I said, well, let me use my skill set and try to help them out with marketing this fundraiser. And it worked wonderfully. And, and after that fundraiser, I kind of realized, well, I could do this. I could help organizations raise awareness, raise money. Um, I can help tell a story or tell a message through a lens. And I just decided to go for it. Um, meeting people like Ray and Queen, people that are invested locally in their communities, it just helped me to decide, I'm willing to risk it. I, I remember actually getting the email from Coastal Carolina, congratulations, your degree's on the way. And I remember looking at that email and just all of a sudden deciding, you know what, I'm gonna chase my dream of photography, I'm gonna stick around and I'm gonna commit one year to it. If, if in a year it's not working out, then I'll continue my path of exercise sports science. But luckily, I, 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 my time with the village group gave me the, the gumption and the willingness to take that leap of faith, and it worked out. So the village group is focused, um, you know, obviously on students and on education, but there's so much more that happens with the village group. Um, there's, there's an, a huge emphasis on being healthy, on being outdoors, um, especially with this year with the, with the pandemic, everyone being cooped up inside. Mental health is extremely important. And the mentors at the Village Group, they emphasize, get outside, enjoy this beautiful area that we're blessed to have. Um, we have a lot of history here, we have a lot of culture here, and the Village Group really supports 
kind of all of those things. So not just education, they, they support culture and innovation and the outdoors, health, leadership, all sorts of things. Marsh, it's very obvious to us that you have an enormous passion for the Village Group. Now, at this moment, I have a short three-minute video that we would like for you to take a look at so you can gauge more understanding on what the Village Group is all about. Now, you'll notice that you will see a familiar face, and I actually think it starts with you, Marsh. Twenty twenty was a difficult year for the Village Group and for students here in Georgetown County. However, the Village Group was able to continue quality programming for their students, such as their Distance Learning Academy and Camp NOAA. Camp NOAA is a program meant to help build self-esteem, character, and mental stability for adolescents in the midst of this pandemic. There were many different learning activities, projects, and crafts that were implemented during Camp NOAA as well. The virtual learning aspect of the Village Group's programming went well overall. Students were able to engage with one another, they were able to get the hang of things eventually, and they were happy to see one another virtually. However, like many students here in Georgetown County, the children would love to get back to school to see each other face to face and to get back to a normal mode of learning. With the help of the CCAR Young Professionals Group, they were able to gather over 6,000 school supplies for students here in Georgetown County. They also worked with partners such as Boeing to do a virtual project building paper aircraft wings with the students. They were also able to continue community outreach through numerous food drives with their partners, through a back to school rally, and with the Christmas dinner here at the end of the year. I couldn't ask for a better program for my children to be a part of. Not just because it's a program that was established by those in Plainsville, but because of what it was doing to change the lives of our children. We think the mission that we have is a great one. Uh, we like to continue to do what we're doing because we think Georgetown County, we think South Carolina, we think this country is better off today because of the work we're doing. We are back. We hope you yes. enjoyed the three minute video of the wrap up of last year for 2020. And now outside are the familiar faces. We're right outside the cultural center. And to my far right is Marsh and the executive director, Larry. And oh my God, Jada, Jada, didn't I just, did I meet you earlier inside? You're out here with me now, Neil. I need you to help me because we're tying this in. We want people to understand that it really takes a village. And we're so glad that we're part of the village group and for folks how to donate money. But before we go into the push, because we want you, we want you to volunteer. We want you to hit that donate now button. Okay. Drum roll. Gonna ask you all a few simple questions about things that were discussed inside, okay? Yes. Hope you're all using our listening skills. Absolutely. Now, the easiest one that probably stood out the most, who among us was in a classroom setting and fell out of their chair? Uh, Does anybody know? Is that Ray? Was it Jada? <laughs> Ray? Was that? Uh, Jada? Ding, 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 Jada, Jada, Jada. <laughs> Okay, now we're always looking for cool things to do with the family. And that's one of the th reasons why we are in front of the Village Flyers. Okay, rent a bike, and everyone come down here, do a tour. How long is the planners, uh, what is it? The Plan tour to planners? Right? Tour of the Plannersville, yes. Yes. How long is that tour to Plannersville so that we know when we come out here with Mom, Susie, Bob? Well, we have three tours. We have a 25 mile tour, a 40 mile tour, and a 65 mile tour. Count me out for the 65 mile tour. 65 mile tour. <laughs> but I'm down for the second yes. one. October 30th. 30th. October 30th. Yes. So also in the fall, now I've heard about, is there a, a haunted church Ooh. nearby? Yeah, 
And there is. There, there's a haunted church on the Plainersville Scenic Byway, Old Gun Church. Uh, I've actually spent the night out there, and let me tell you, I'm a 30-year-old man, and I sped out of there so quickly. It was very scary in the middle of the night, but I got some great photos, so it's well worth the trip during the day. During the day. During the day. <laughs> well, I grew up in the village, and I had some good times there at night. Jada, have you gone to the church yet? <laughs> yes. yes? Was it spooky? Yeah, because no. I went there during the day. Oh, she went during the daytime, so she's following your lead, March. I love it. Now, one of the last things totally wanted um, buy-in on, everyone, what is your favorite Georgetown County charity? Does anyone have any idea what nonprofit that we're talking about that we want you to go to thevillagegroup.org or follow us on Facebook or Instagram, The Village Group. So, what's your favorite charity in Georgetown County? The, the Village Group!